Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. Um, so tonight we have a little, uh, uh, an interesting little problem. Uh, one of the viewers um, had asked me a couple of questions about um, indexing um, a part in the mill to put a square on the end of something. And um, so something like you'd see uh, at the end of a chuck key, so the square. So the idea is that you mill a flat, then you index, and you mill a flat, and you index, and you mill a flat. So, um, so there's you know there's some ways you can do that. Um, and um, I started thinking about it. I'm like, wow. So what if you had to you know what if you had to do a, a, a pretty nice job, right? And uh, nice accurate indexing. Well, you can use you know there's a number of ways you can do it. You can use a square. You can, you can cut one and then rotate it and then indicate it. Um, so there, there's many different methods for uh, um, possibly indexing that and doing an accurate job of it. Um, so the, this, uh, this viewer, his name is Eric. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of tools. He's just kind of starting out. So he's building his own tools and uh, he's just kind of getting going. So doesn't want to spend a lot of money or doesn't have a lot of money I'm not sure which um, and but he right now he just is, doesn't have a lot of, uh, of tooling and equipment so he's got a mill and some one two three blocks and some cutters and things like that so kind of I would say minimal tooling just starting out so I started thinking about it from that perspective is you know what would you do if you just had really kind of bottom uh, you know basic beginner tooling right how would you index that um, you know, he doesn't have a collet block and then, you know, or a spin indexer or et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's literally dozens of ways that you can do that. But if you're limited in your tooling uh, to really, really bare minimum stuff, it starts to get a little trickier, I think. So in a way, you know, we're spoiled by all of our tooling, right? But if you were on a desert island and you had a milling machine and a, and a vise and a couple of parallels, you know, and no McMaster car or MSC or whoever, right? You know, how would you do that and do a nice job of it um, so that it would have to, uh, or that it would be an accurate job? So anyway, I started thinking about it and uh, I fiddled around with a couple of, couple of possibilities and then I said, geez, that's, you know, I might make an interesting video. Um, it's, yeah, let me know what you think, okay? So, uh, um, we'll, we'll try. We'll do a couple of things, and uh, and, uh, and I'll throw it out there, and we'll uh, we'll see what people think about it. Okay, so let's get going. All right. So what I get here's our our test victim here. This is just a piece of uh, half inch diameter uh, coal rolled uh, steel rod, and we'll put a little uh, a little square on one end. Um, so it's you know it's 12 millimeter rod uh, steel, and uh, we're just going to put an arbitrary uh, square uh, on the end there, okay? Um, so the idea is we're going to get it in the vise and then we'll mill it and then we'll rotate it and we'll mill it and we'll rotate it, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thought, and I don't know if Eric has this tooling, is, is you know, one way you can, you can achieve this is uh, by clamping it to something else that is square. So this is ground nice and square on the on the side let's see are we seeing this okay yeah so it's ground real square on the side and it's ground real square on on the bottom so right right out of the gate you know we've got one two there's three sides right there and um, um, just by clamping it to a v-block okay so um, another way uh, might be to, and it depends how you can modify the part, you can attach something temporarily to the end, um, a little flag or something like that that you could use to index. But we're just going to do that, do this with common tooling. So I don't know if Eric has a, uh, has a set of V-blocks, so here's some different ones here. So this is a, uh, this is a little Taft Pierce here um, and uh, this is a brown and sharp uh, just a small multi V block with a clamp and then this is a uh, a little set of sterret um, that are on a guide rod here but in in general these are accurately made uh, square 
between the, the V and the side and the bottom. So uh, anyway, that's one way to, uh, that you could index that part. But we're not going to use the V block. I just wanted to show that uh, as a possibility. So I think we're, we're going to get even more basic than that. So um, he, he did say he had some one, two, three blocks, which is good. And, uh, and if he's got a mill and he's using his mill, we're going we're gonna to make the leap of faith and say he has some, uh, some parallels available to him. Okay, so here's our rod. So what I was thinking might be an interesting way to do this is once again clamping something to this that is our a reference for 90 degrees. Now this is just a chunk of, it could be a parallel. Um, this is, a, this is a, a lathe tool bit here. Or it could just be a piece of coal roll. Um, so here we can clamp this and now we can get a 90 degree index pretty easily there. So let's, let's just do that and let's get that set up. So I'm just going to clamp this to this with a couple of parallel clamps. And once again, I don't know what he has. He didn't, he didn't send me a picture of his toolbox. Um, so we're just kind of going with real simple, real simple stuff here. Now, if you guys haven't used these parallel clamps, you know, everybody looks at those and goes, how do you use those things? Um, they're actually, they're actually pretty good little clamps. Um, and they have these thin little tips. So, they can get into into little areas that other clamps won't get into. So um, anyway, I used to work with a guy that uses these all the time and I started watching him and I said, gee, you know, I think I need to get some of those. Okay, so now that's down hard, that's down hard. So now we're, we have one index and then if we rotate this like so, then we have a second index. So we can actually cut four sides of a square there. So if we, if we cut here, if we cut here and then come over here and cut here and then we rotate, then we cut here and then we cut here, we have a square. And uh, that's similar to this, okay? So that's kind of what I would do. Now, we got this little problem here. We got a bunch of business hanging off of there. So we'd have to, we'd have to block that up a little bit. Um, and uh, let's see, I don't remember how I had it here. Let's go with that. So now I can, I can clamp at that. You know, and this doesn't have to be, you know, this can be any, any filler block here. So now I'm up against my one, two, three block. I got room underneath, like so. And then that's locked in there good. So then when I want to index, I can do this. And what I noticed is before when I was fiddling around with this, uh, that tool bit's a little wider than, uh, than um, than half inch, so I had to put a little, a little shim in there. Okay, and then so there's our second index. So that's one way you could index that uh, uh, pretty accurately. How accurate? Um, depends how careful you are rotating the part and making sure it's seated and all that. All those things affect uh, what what you're doing. Um, and um, so you can use a test indicator too to, to check the sides also. Um, so what I would do in this case is um, I would probably for, you know, based on uh, I'm going to put a stop in the middle here and get it in there. Now one nice thing about this stop here is I got this small rod here so I can actually kind of go right in the center of that and then my cutter my cutter will miss it. Let's get 
get that in, kind of in line there. So we do something like that. I don't have that tight. Okay, so that's nice and tight. So what we do is we'd slide that up to the stop this way, lock it all down, and come in there and mill that. Actually, let's go ahead and do it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and mill this. Now we'll index it. That's it. All right. So there's a nice square. And I use the side of the end mill because it gives me a nice, a nice lead out there. And um, um, anyway, so there's a simple way to with no basically no tooling to uh, index for a, a square like that so anyway thanks Eric for the uh, the nice uh, the nice suggestion okay so that's it for this video um, it was just a quick uh, uh, simple way of doing that I started thinking about it and uh, 
Um, I just felt like shooting a video about it. Um, and, um, you know, there's nobody's going to argue that there's there's probably a hundred ways that you could uh, that you could put a square on the end of a of a rod, um, so that's one of a hundred ways of doing that. So maybe nobody thought about that uh, or had seen that way of doing it or that particular setup. So um, it just adds to the you know what I would call work holding knowledge, right? You know, one of the tricky things in this work is um, uh, is work holding, uh, how to hold the work accurately and index things so that you don't lose reference surfaces um, uh, when you change setups or change sides. You know, the, if you take a block and you and you clamp it in the vise and you work on it, the, the machine is geometry is is accurate within that setup typically. Uh, where you run into trouble is as soon as you take that part out of the vise and you go to a second operation that's when the trouble starts, okay? And in particular, the tighter the tolerances. So work holding is really important. And, uh, uh, and like I said, this is one way of 100 to, to do this job. Um, but I wanted to show with pretty bare bones tooling uh, what you, uh, uh, a way that you could do that. So uh, um, anyway, I just wanted to thank Eric for making me think about it, okay? Because that's good, because he, told me how he did it and, uh, and he struggled with it a little bit and, uh, uh, and we talked back and forth just a little and uh, so anyway it's been kicking around in the back of my head for a couple of days and uh, I said eh, you know this will make a good video. So I hope you guys liked it and uh, go ahead and throw some comments up. If you like these shorter ones uh, with a quick single subject uh, maybe we'll do a few of those uh, but I don't want it to detract from my project work so uh, um, you know I'm not going to do every single uh, uh, you know, tapped hole 27,500 or whatever. So, um, anyway, so I don't mind doing a few of these. So, anyway, thanks, guys. Uh, catch you later.